Hello, and thank you for your interest in Amanda Enterprise. My name is Paul Yutman, and I want to take a moment to give you an example of installing uh, Amanda Enterprise server software on a Linux or Solaris server. Uh, if you've never been to Zamanda.com, now's a great chance to navigate to that web address. Uh, I'm looking at the front page for uh, Zamanda.com now, and I'm seeing the three products offered by Zamanda, being Amanda Enterprise Network Backup, Zamanda Recovery Manager for MySQL, and Zamanda Cloud Backup. So today we will be talking about uh, Amanda Enterprise uh, and uh, installing this on a Linux or Solaris server. If you are interested in more information about Amanda Enterprise, please visit the website and uh, click through the links uh, for the section for Amanda Enterprise. To purchase software, uh, you begin by following the login link at the upper right uh, and creating a free, uh, registering a free account with the Zamanda Network website. Um, once you've done so, you can uh, always work with sales and or buy directly from the web store, Zamanda.com. And once you've purchased products from us, you do have a download tab in your Zamanda Network account, as well as a documentation uh, tab, and lastly, a support tab. So these are three new tabs you see once uh, subscriptions have been purchased for one of the uh, Zamanda products. Um, and this allows you to download your software, find enterprise documentation, about the software that you have subscriptions for, and also um, how to work with support. So uh, this allows you both to have a searchable knowledge base as well as to open and follow cases that you may have uh, open with technical support. So uh, today we're looking at just installing Amanda Enterprise. A great place to start when doing that is uh, going to the documentation tab in your Zamanda Network account. Uh, you will see the three products that Zamanda offers uh, under the documentation tab. The first one will be Amanda Enterprise Manuals, and we have the three versions that are currently being supported. Today we are talking about the latest version, version 3.3.x. So if I follow that link, uh, it does take me to the main documentation page for Amanda Enterprise 3.3. And when it comes to installing the software, uh, it's very good to read the section uh, under installing the correct Amanda Enterprise components and licenses. And it's also uh, very good to start with the very first link on the page, the system requirements link. This takes you to all the pre-install requirements. It's worth giving a read through to make sure that uh, you understand the requirements for running a Amanda Enterprise uh, server and client. And also we will break things down by OSs as well. So when it comes to installing on uh, a Linux server, for instance, we give a breakdown for what Linux packages are required before installing. And uh, is being that we do support a number of uh, Linux distributions, uh, we will eventually break it down uh, by the different distributions and show you individual libraries that are required, uh, for instance, by Debian uh, and Ubuntu uh, versus Red Hat and CentOS, Oracle Enterprise Linux, uh, Sless, Fedora, and OpenSUSE. So this is a great place to start before installing a Man Enterprise server software onto a Linux server. Uh, find out which packages and libraries are required for the particular distribution and version that you are running. Today I'm going to give an example of using uh, CentOS uh, 5 OS. Uh, in this case it will be a 32-bit system, but we can always install Amanda Enterprise on a 64-bit system as well. Although the Amanda Enterprise server software is 32-bit code, it can always be installed on a 64-bit server as long as the appropriate 32-bit libraries are installed on the server. So uh, a couple example lines here for installing on a 64-bit Red Hat 6 or CentOS 6 platform uh, are included here, as well as installing on a 64-bit Debian 6 server. Uh, show some example packages, general packages that need to be installed, as well as making sure you have the necessary 32-bit libraries installed as well. Once you have provided all of the pre-install requirements for running uh, Amanda Enterprise, uh, the next place to go is to hop over to the download tab. This is where you have access to subscriptions for software that you have already purchased, uh, either through sales or through the web store. You'll notice the very first link at the top is um, a download for the license files. So if you have purchased products from us, um, you will have a license file or a uh, cloud certificate. This should be downloaded, one of the first things you may want to download. And then you want to get to downloading software for the particular software that you have subscriptions for. 
In this case, for Men Enterprise, it is under the Backup Server section, uh, is where you will find the installer for the server software for Men Enterprise. There is a drop down that offers all of the various platforms that are supported by Men Enterprise, and so you simply pick the uh, platform uh, that you plan to install a Men Enterprise on. As I'm going to be using CentOS 5 today, I'm going to click CentOS 5 and uh, the download tab will show me the appropriate downloads for that OS. Uh, the main one being the Amanda Backup Server 3.3.3 installer. I do want to go ahead and click on that and uh, begin downloading the installer. I'll go ahead and save that into uh, my downloads folder. And also uh, I want to download any mandatory patches as well. So uh, in this particular case there is a mandatory patch for the ZMC, that is the front-end web GUI for Amanda Enterprise. So there is an Amanda Enterprise ZMC 3.3.3.1 patch that, that is required uh, after installation. So I'll go ahead and download the patch as well. Um, and lastly, there is a package that is a VMware package. This is if I plan to do image level backups, virtual machines in a vSphere environment. And so this is more of an optional download only if it's applicable to the type of backup you plan to run. So in, in this particular case, I will not be downloading the optional package. I also want to make sure I do grab my license file, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, if pop-ups are being blocked on your browser, do make sure to uh, allow them for network.zamana.com so that your pop-ups do go through. So once I've downloaded my license file and the installer and any mandatory patches and the downloads are complete, then I want to go ahead and move those to the server that I plan to use as the Amanda Backup server. In this case, I'm planning to use a uh, Linux CentOS system, so I will uh, go ahead and log into that system now. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use PuTTY to SSH into that Linux server from a Windows desktop. And I want to eventually move the packages that I'm downloading over to this server. Uh, for that, I'll go ahead and use uh, WinSCP. So if I open up a session to the IP address of the machine that I plan to use as the backup server, I can then wait for my downloads to complete and then have them S copied over to the server so I can begin installing them. And then I'm going to move those three files over to the CentOS uh, 5 server that I plan to use as the Amanda backup server. Okay, once the copies are complete, then I'll go ahead and return to the PuTTY session for my server. Uh, confirm that I'm finding the files just downloaded into uh, the slash root directory. So I have copied over the Amanda Enterprise 3.3.3 uh, installer. The uh, mandatory patch is located here, and I also have my Zamanda underscore license file. That's my license file for running Amanda Enterprise. Um, and notice that uh, none of these are executable. So um, the license file does not need to be executable, but the uh, binary installer is an executable that needs to be run as the root user. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make that file executable. Um, also, the uh, mandatory patch in this case is gzipped, but uh, I'll go ahead and gunzip that and make sure to change permissions on that later as well. For now, I have the uh, installer ready to be executed. I should verify that I have all of the packages listed in the documentation on this server. Uh, I might run something such as this in rpm-q. Uh, I might check for some of the packages listed in the pre-installation documentation to make sure that I do have all of the 32-bit libraries and also the Linux packages mentioned for installation. I see that most of these are already uh, installed. I do notice that a couple are listed as not already installed, the GNU PG and MailX. So I will go ahead and install those on my server now. And once all of the uh, pre-install requirements have been fulfilled, uh, I'm then ready to go ahead and run the binary installer as the root user on the Linux server. It is an interactive uh, installation. I'm first presented with uh, accepting the license file. After I read through it and accept the terms, I'm given a chance to say yes or no to accepting this license. 
Uh, it's required to say yes to proceed with the installation. And then my next uh, selection is to decide whether I want to run the front end uh, web server for the Amanda Enterprise uh, software, either as a protocol HTTP or HTTPS. The default is using HTTPS, and I'll go ahead and accept the default uh, for this example install. And then uh, at this point, I'm ready to begin uh, to say yes or no to continuing with the install. It is possible to install Amanda Enterprise on a server that already has a web server running. Uh, if the installer detects that the usual ports for um, HTTP and HTTPS are already being used, then the installer will prompt me for specifying alternate ports that I would like to run the Amanda server uh, web server on uh, for the front end UI. In this case, there is no other web server, so I can just use the, the usual ports for HTTP and HTTPS, and I'll just say that I'm ready to continue with the install. You'll also notice a message here about do not exit uh, with a control C. Uh, if you do try to abort an installation partway through the install before it's completed all the way to the end, then uh, you do end up with a partial install and it will be required to uh, probably invoke some help from support at that point to have the install fully cleaned up before you attempt installing again. So I do advise you always let the install run fully to completion. At that point, if there is any error or uh, issue with the install, then you can always contact support for additional help as needed. But otherwise, hopefully it should only take a few minutes uh, or less, as it did in this case. Uh, Amanda Inter Enterprise should be quickly installed with the installer, and I have a chance to read the README if I decide to. Uh, once the installer is run uh, and I've fully installed Amanda Enterprise, the next thing is to install any mandatory patches. Uh, in this particular case, there is the ZMC 3.3.3.1 patch that is downloaded and is shown as this file here. To install that, I want to first gun zip the file. So it is a compressed file. And I first want to uncompress it. And then I will execute it directly. So uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, make sure that I make that file executable. And then again, go ahead and run it as the root user. That quickly installs uh, some files over the top of files that were just installed by the installer. Uh, and at this point, I am ready to go ahead and log into my Zamanda Management Console. If you did choose the default of running as HTTPS, your browser will let you know um, that the SSL certificate is an unknown certificate. Amanda Enterprise does ship with a generic SSL cert. So communication between browser and server is encrypted, but it's not done with a certificate that is uh, officially known by the browser. This can always be replaced by your own self-signed certificate or officially purchased certificate. Otherwise, you can say that you understand that this is a site that you installed and not a malicious site, and you can permanently uh, accept the uh, exception. And at that point, your browser does show you the login to the Zamanda Management Console. The default login is username admin with password admin. That gets me logged into the Zamanda Management Console. Uh, I find myself on the administrative tab uh, on the backup sets page and I'm ready to begin creating some backup sets for the data I want to back up. I can also as well create um, devices that I want to back up to. Before doing that, I am prompted with a Zamanda Network authentication. Uh, this is just a place where I can put in the same username and password that I use to log into Zamanda Network when downloading my software. And that just simply associates my Zamanda Network account with this Zamanda Management Console login. Uh, so once I enter my username and password, I can click Save. And once I've entered that once, the association is made. As far as creating devices, I'm now on the Devices page, and I could begin setting up devices that I want to back up to. So thank you very much for uh, being with me during this sample installation. I hope you find uh, using Amanda Enterprise a good choice for you, and I hope you find the installation straightforward. Thank you very much.